Senator Pat Toomey was one of 12 members to serve on the Joint Select Committee on Deficit Reduction. This so-called super committee was charged with the goal of reducing the deficit by $1.5 trillion. Senator Toomey visited the Heritage Foundation earlier this week to talk about where we go from here. We caught up with him in his Senate office. Senator, thank you. My pleasure. Now, you were one of the members who made news by offering a compromise. Senator Durbin even described this as a breakthrough. Can you explain how that happened? I came up with this framework that specified the kind of tax reform, suggested that we put $250 billion of, of revenue over the course of 10 years. Other, that would come from the top two brackets, otherwise the reforms would maintain existing progressivity. And that would be the revenue piece. On the spending side, we said, um, uh, oh, well, that would be part of the revenue piece. I should say the total revenue piece was $500 billion, but the balance came from relatively non-controversial things like asset sales and, and uh, user fees, things that are, have been really vetted by both sides. Um, so that was $500 billion. We suggested $700 billion, $750 billion in, in spending reductions from a menu of items that had been accepted, at least conditionally, on both sides. So that would have gotten us to the 1.25. If you add in the interest savings that comes with it, you'd be close to $1.5 trillion. Would have completely avoided the sequestration, would have achieved our goal, would have had a spending to revenue ratio that was actually better from the Democrats' point of view than what um, the various other commissions had. I thought this was a really, really reasonable proposal. And Well, and some conservatives even raised their yeah, eyebrows when right, they heard right, about your plan right. to increase taxes. Yeah. What does it say about Washington that even a concession like that on the part of a conservative right. wouldn't even pass muster? <clears throat> Uh, it's it's really it's a little bit disturbing. I'll tell you why. Um, when you consider it in context with the, the final offer that we made in, in a sort of just the last ditch effort when the clock had pretty much run out, and the only thing we had time left to do was something dramatically scaled down. We said, okay, how about this? Six hundred forty-four billion dollars, a mix of spending cuts that are absolutely the least controversial, and revenue of this sort that's not a tax increase, revenue like asset sales and some user fees, non-controversial. Can we at least agree to that so that we don't have complete goose egg to show for all this work? And the response that came back was, well, we don't consider that revenue to count because unless someone's getting a tax increase, we're not interested in doing anything. That was very disturbing to me. Why should we say that someone has to be punished or we're not going to agree even to cut spending that we acknowledge is wasteful, inappropriate, unnecessary. When you get to that point, then you're clearly being driven by something other than what is fiscally rational or economically constructive. It seems like there's a uh, almost a revenge, a bitterness, some, some class warfare that is motivating people at that point. So that was disturbing. What are some of the other reasons that you think went into to their decision to... to <clears throat> well, I, I think, and, and again, I want to be fair, I think several of the Democrats on the committee really wanted to find a way to reach an agreement. In the end, what they were not willing to do was to stand up to the most liberal wing of their caucus. And the pressure pushing them away from a deal was significant. It, it was, I think, in part, the President's campaign. Let's face it, it's entirely predicated on running against the do-nothing Congress. It's the way he would describe it. Now, we've been a very unproductive Congress. It's because the Democrat-controlled Senate won't do anything, right? But that's a subtlety that's been uh, not exactly uh, acknowledged by the president's campaign. So that's point number one. A big agreement in this committee certainly would have stepped on that message. The second fact is, let's face it, there are a lot of Democrats in this town who have long harbored the ambition of gutting the defense budget, right? That's something they've always wanted. That's exactly what happens if there's no agreement. So, uh, so that must have been tempting. And then finally, in the absence of any agreement, the default setting on tax policy is a massive tax increase. So for those reasons, I think there was certainly a significant segment of the Democratic caucus. Well, I'm not speculating. They're on record, right? Jerry Nadler is on record and others are on record saying, I hope there's no deal because they like this alternative. So. I'm just suggesting that that created a uh, countervailing pressure. Uh, and, and on our side, there was no such 
counter that. I mean, we had no reason not to try to reach an agreement, and we, we really tried hard. Do you think that the Occupy Wall Street protests that have popped up in New York and other cities emboldened that liberal wing of the party? I think it did. I think it suggests, it informs their judgment and colors their view of where the American public is. I think they have an exaggerated view of the extent to which people generally uh, accept the kind of class warfare and uh, resentment towards, uh, towards successful people. And they feel like it almost demands that prosperous and productive people be punished here. And um, I just think that's a very unhealthy attitude. And the cuts themselves that were included in the debt deal, is there any hope with the Democrat majority in the, con in the Senate of reworking that? Uh, you, you mean the cuts that were contemplated in the framework that, that we had? The, the cuts to the military, the, the, the Pentagon cuts that, yeah, oh, that, are, that yeah, yeah. are going to... Well, <clears throat> let me put it this way. I think it's really important that we have the $1.2 trillion in cuts. We are, and we're heading off a fiscal cliff. I mean, I can't overstate how perilous I think our situation is, so we've got to cut the spending. But I do think it's important that we do it in a different fashion. And one of the silver linings of the work that we did is we identified many hundreds of billions of dollars of potential savings that shouldn't be very controversial. So I do hope and I suspect that we'll have some success in reconfiguring the composition of those kids. Senator Toomey, thank you. Thanks for having me.